Hello, we are starting a new topic. We are going to go now over diode and diodes, diode circuits. After a quick introduction, we will go over the diode characteristics, load line analysis, rectifying circuits, one of the main applications of diodes, look at thinner diodes and how they can be used as regulators, we will do the main application uh, for this chapter is going to be how to build a power supply and we will do an unregulated power supply and then a regulated power supply and then we'll do some other applications. We will end up with a small signal models for diodes. So you recall from the last chapter and last topic on semiconductor physics, if we connect P-type and N-type material, so dope silicon, we create a new structure. But the structure is a building block for many other devices, transistors, etc. But if you just create a device by itself with P and N, nothing else, you have a diode. Okay? This is the symbol for the diode. And we would like to use it because this is a useful new semiconductor device. So anytime that you want to do circuits, so to go from a device, from a material like this a structure, to actually do circuit analysis, you need to do to have a model of the device. And a model is what? A model is an equivalent circuit. In order for us to do analysis, we need to have each device, okay, so we have P and N, Together, what is that equal to? As a combination of resistors, capacitors, inductors, and voltage sources, or, or sources, voltage and current sources, okay? Which may be dependent or independent. So what we study in circuit analysis is very valuable because any device, any material, anything that we are going to use for which we are going to do circuit analysis and design, we need to come up with a model. And the way to come up with a model is to first look at the current voltage characteristics. Meaning, what happens if we connect a voltage source around here, right? So we have a voltage source. What is going to be the current in both directions as a function of that voltage, right? So we know that for a resistor, this is a linear, right? So if this, or for P-type or N-type by itself, right? You increase the voltage and the current just goes linearly. This will be for N-type, for P-type, for a resistor, okay? So if you recall, our current voltage characteristic for a P-N junction was something like this, right? We have the voltage across the diode now and the current through the diode and it was something like this. Initially, we do not get any voltage and then, sorry, any current and then we get current. And if you go reverse bias, you get very little all the way to the breakdown. Let me change the color. So no current, although we are increasing the voltage up to some new voltage. Then, and this is a high resistance region, so to speak, then you are going to get, for very small changes in voltage, a lot of changes in current. So a low resistance region there. And if you go, this is forward bias. If you re reverse the voltage, you get very, very little current. So that's what we saw already in the semiconductor devices lecture in the previous playlist. Now, so let's come up with a model. Now, models, you can have the models of different complexity to see how many uh, non-idealities do you consider. So a first order model, order, you could think of the ideal diode, the ideal rectifying circuit. You have something like that, and the model could be if you think of a current voltage characteristic like this, it will be no current in the reverse bias at all. And then any, if you're in forward bias, it is a short circuit. 
So how will we model that with circuit elements? Again, when we say let's model, what we are doing is creating an equivalent circuit after looking at the current voltage characteristics. So this will be that for the forward bias, our diode, we are modeling it as a switch. And in this case, it's a closed switch, it closed. Okay. And in the reverse bias, this switch is open. So there's no current. So you see a diode in the circuit, you just do this. Is the polarity in the p-type or in the anode greater than in the n-type, right? And if it is, it is a short or otherwise it's an open. That will be a first order model. Think of a model, an approximation, first order approximation. Okay? And this model actually is going to work quite well, especially when the voltages that you're working with are quite large compared to the 0 0.7 volts that we know that for a silicon diode we have there. So let's do a more accurate model, a second order model. Again, that's an approximation. In this case, we could say our diode, this is equal to, has a current voltage characteristic. So we change the voltage, how is the current going to change? Where for reverse voltages, still we get no current. And even for forward bias, low voltages, voltages, we get no current. But if the voltage is more than 0 0.7 volts, then we get current and it is <coughs> like a short circuit. So what will be the model in that case, right? In that case, what we have now is that in forward bias, I have my closed switch with a voltage source of 0 0.7 volts. And in the reverse bias, I have my open switch with that 7 point, 0 0.7 volts. Okay. So what are we doing effectively, for instance? When we are doing circuit analysis, we look whether we are in forward bias, and if we are in forward bias, we are replacing that diode with a voltage source of 0 0.7 volts. Notice, that's an equivalent circuit. Notice, when we are having any new material, any new device, we need to think, based on the current voltage characteristics and the behavior of the device, as how are we going to create a circuit comprising of resistors, capacitors, inductors, and voltage sources, as well as current sources, dependent and independent, so that we can do circuit analysis. We could be even more accurate, a third order model, right? Approximation is, okay, our diode is equivalent to No current in the reverse bias. So if we are here, we get no current. No current up to 0 0.7 volts. So it's an open circuit. And then we get an increased current after 0 0.7 volts, where this is really like a resistive behavior, a low resistive behavior. Let's call this the bulk resistance. Okay. And so in that case, what will be our model? for the forward bias, it is a closed switch, and then we are going to have a um, voltage source, 0 0.7 volts, plus minus, and a resistor, bulk resistance. In the reverse bias, it's an open switch, same model. A fourth order model, each one of them is more complicated, right? 
we can go ahead and say, okay, nothing in the reverse, but we're going to model the exponential relationship here, okay? And so we are going to say that the current is some saturation current e to the voltage across the diode over the thermal voltage. Now, which is the best model to use? Is it better to just always be more accurate? The answer is no. It depends on the application. It depends what you are doing. You see a circuit, you want to be able to see how the circuit behaves. And based on those voltage levels to see well which ones are forward bias diodes, etc., you may just want to do the first order approximation to see and replace the diodes if they are forward bias by a closed switch, and if they are reverse bias by an open switch, and do a quick analysis. And that's very accurate, especially when you are doing analysis for if the voltages are sufficiently high uh, compared to the 0 0.7 volts. If you want to do a little bit more refined analysis, the second model is just perfect, um, where you're replacing a diode just with a bolted source, if it is in forward bias. Okay. The important thing is that it is not that having a more complex model is better for, especially when you're doing quick analysis. You need to be aware of these models. You need to be aware of the complexity. You need to know that based on the semiconductor physics of things like what are going on, the saturation current, the exponential relationship, all that, but those <clears throat> details you can leave for when you are doing the simulation or when you are doing the actual circuit verification. So most of the time you are probably going to be using the second order model or the first order model and when you're doing spies, you have much more complex models. And you're going to see that you get actually quite, quite close. So with that, in the next video, we're going to go over diode characteristics and the concept of load line analysis. Thank you.